Disclaimer, presented for historical purposes only, may contain violent and offensive imagery. In June 1940, an armistice with the French was signed. German troops marched through Paris. Hitler has erased the Versailles Treaty. Britain remains. Goering's aircraft take the offensive and fight bitter battles with the British who retain the mastery of the air. Ruthless raids on industrial towns such as Coventry unite the British people. British towns are transformed into heaps of ruins, but the will to fight only grows on the island. Preparations against a German invasion are made. nation is stirred and moved as it never has been at any time in its long eventful famous history and it is no hackneyed trope of speech to say that they mean to conquer or to die what a triumph the life of these battered cities is over the worst that fire and bomb can do Chamberlain's successor, the leader of a fighting England, Winston Churchill, assures himself of American support at a meeting with President Roosevelt in the Atlantic even before the United States comes into the war. The Atlantic Charter proclaims the four freedoms, a joint declaration of war aims and human rights. But the German invasion of England never came. Five months after the collapse of France, Hitler prepares to attack the Soviet Union. Two years earlier, he made a non-aggression pact with Stalin. The Soviet Union is invaded on a broad front. The goal is the quick capture of Moscow. Once again, the German troops advance rapidly over devastated and unfriendly soil. German victories are costly. Hitler fails to take Moscow. He is surprised by the winter which takes its toll of an insufficiently equipped army. Near Moscow, Sebastopol and in many other places, the Red Army stemmed the German advance.
now the fortunes of war began to turn on all fronts. In October 1942, the British Eighth Army under General Montgomery breaks through the German lines at El Alamein. After 12 days of fighting, Germany has lost the war in Africa. attempt to capture the rich oil wells of the Caucasus in the flourishing agricultural areas of the Don and the lower Volga. Eighty divisions are thrown into the battle on the southern front. They have to pay the price for Hitler's fight for world domination. In November, three red armies attack north and south of Stalingrad and Hitler loses the initiative. In a few months, this once flourishing city is transformed into a scrap heap. The Red Armies recapture Stalingrad after a battle which rages from street to street and house to house. On January 30th, 1943, Hitler's Reich celebrates his 10th anniversary. On the following day, Field Marshal Paulus capitulates in Stalingrad, going into captivity with 91,000 men. The Battle of Stalingrad cost Germany and her allies 142,000 lives. <laughs> Noch in tausend Jahren muss mit heiligen Schauern das Wort Stalingrad aussprechen und sich erinnern, dass dort Deutschland letzten Endes das den Stempel zum Endsieg gesetzt hat. Zehn Jahre, meine Kameraden, hat uns der Führer jetzt von Größe zu Größe geführt, zum Heile, aus Ohnmacht heraus, aus Armut heraus. Kamerad, woher stammst du? Aus Friesenland. Und du, Kamerad? Aus Bayern. Und du? Vom Kaiserstuhl. Und du? Aus Pommern. Und aus Königsberg. Aus Schlesien. Von de Waterkant. Vom Schwarzwald, aus Dresden, von der Donau, vom Rhein und von der Saar. Ein Volk, ein Führer. Das Deutschland von ein hat um drei Viertel zwölf die Waffen niedergelegt. Ich habe grundsätzlich immer erst fünf Minuten nach Grün aufgehört. <lacht> ich wollte zur Wolga kommen, an einer bestimmten Stelle. An einer bestimmten Stadt, zugehörigerweise trägt sie den Namen von Stalin selber, aber denken Sie nur nicht, dass ich deswegen dort losmarschiert bin. Sie könnte ja auch ganz anders heißen, sondern nur, weil dort ein ganz wichtiger Punkt ist. Weil ich kennst, weiß nicht, wer den machen will. Ausgehend ist Stalin ja ein kapitaler Fehler, das ein, ein strategischer Fehler. Das wollen wir mal abwarten, ob das ein strategischer Fehler war. Und da kann man schon mir glauben. Was wir einmal besitzen, das halten wir dann schon auch dafür so fest, dass in diesem Krieg jedenfalls ein anderer dort, wo wir ständig mehr hinkommen. Da kann man sich drauf verlassen. The Battle of Stalingrad is the turning point of the war. The beginning of the great retreats and great reverses. It is no longer a question of Blitzkrieg, but a hope of holding positions. Many lives are still squandered in senseless battle.
slave workers from all the occupied countries are now dragged to Germany to serve Hitler's war industries. By the end of 1944, 4,795,000 men and women have been deported to Germany from Russia, Poland, France, and Holland, Yugoslavia, and even Italy. Arrested on the streets or in their homes, they are transported in cattle trucks, and many die on the way. In Eastern Europe, Himmler sets up huge concentration camps. They swallow up hundreds of thousands of people. The healthy become slave workers in branches of German factories. The others are doomed. People from all occupied Europe are brought here to become numbers in a nameless mass. Work gives freedom, declared Rudolf Hiss, the commandant of the Auschwitz concentration camp. But the only free people in this world of his are the dead. Cross-examined after the war, Hiss stated that in Auschwitz alone, approximately two and a half million people were liquidated, mostly Poles, Russians, Gypsies, and Jews. It was Hess's idea to use the cyanide compound Cyclone B for the mass extermination of humans. As he once wrote, it guarantees an absolutely certain and quick death, especially in crowded, dry, and airtight chambers. The condemned were led into gas chambers which were built to look like ordinary shower baths. First came the women and children. The doors were locked and the gas introduced through ventilators. After 20 minutes at the most, all were dead. The victim's gold teeth and the women's hair were removed. The corpses were burned. Crematoria 1 and 2 in Auschwitz had a capacity of 2,000 corpses a day. Hearst wrote, more was not possible if one did not wish to run the risk of damaging the plant. The greatest number of gassed and burned in 24 hours in the entire Auschwitz plant was reached during the summer of 1944, when in less than two months, most of a group of 400,000 Jews from Hungary were gassed to death. This action was led by SS Obersturmbannführer Adolf Eichmann. This says Hangman carefully maintained his anonymity and was among the war criminals who escaped. Fifteen years after the German capitulation, Israeli agents captured him in his hiding place in this week, the death's head unit of the SS carried out the systematic extermination of human beings as the first step towards the new order in Europe based on race. Under orders of a man who in his youth in the slums of Vienna discovered that what he hated most was the Jews. He became powerful enough to order the murder of millions of people and to be obeyed. Orders are orders. But those condemned to death or a life of slavery were not always content with their fate. In April 1943, Himmler orders the Warsaw Ghetto raised to the ground and the Jews transported to the death camps. During almost three weeks, the inhabitants of the ghetto resist the SS and police troops, which, under Major General Strop, systematically burn down house after house. The inhabitants are left with the choice of either dying in the conflagration or leaping from the balcony. When the uprising has been suppressed, 
the victor's booty consists of nine rifles, 59 pistols, a few hundred hand grenades. For the first time, the unarmed victim has risen against his executioner. He knew he had to die, but he wanted to die on his feet. After the liquidation of the ghetto, the fight continues in Poland. In 1944, it is plain that the Germans cannot hold the country. To establish Polish authority before the entry of the Red Army, General Borg gives the signal for an uprising on August 1st, 1944. The battle between Germans and Poles lasts 63 days and claims 200,000 Polish lives. In October, the surviving Poles are forced to leave the city and live in the woods. The city is systematically destroyed. This picture has no documents about the reasons why the Soviet army already operating near Warsaw did not attempt to help the Polish insurgents. Increased terror cannot save Hitler's regime. The situation becomes acute in 1944. On June 6, the Western Allies land in Normandy under the command of General Eisenhower. The decisive battle for Europe has begun. In this situation, a number of officers and politicians attempt to remove Hitler. On July 20th, Colonel Klaus von Stauffenberg hides a bomb under Hitler's table in the headquarters in East Prussia. As Hitler's usual concrete bunker is under repair, the meeting is held in a wooden barrack, and this saves his life. The bomb blows out the roof and thin walls. Hitler suffers minor burns, and his right arm is paralyzed. 
Hitler takes a fearful revenge. 4,980 people are executed during the following months and thousands sent to the concentration camp. A so-called People's Court under the presidency of Freisler pronounces death sentences en masse. At the first trial, a field marshal von Witzleben is forced to appear without braces or belt. The Nazi veteran and chief of police in Berlin, Count Heldorf, is one of the conspirators. Sie haben ferner bekundet, dass Ihnen die Einstellung der Partei zum Adel nicht zugesagt hat. Das ist mir nun völlig unverständlich. Sie war Polizeipräsident der Reichshauptstadt. Oder Können Sie ihn, wie Sie wissen, Gruppenführer und Obergruppenführer nennen? Alle Gliederungen, der NSDAP, die auch adlig war, ich muss auch bekennen, nicht wie viele meiner Parteigenossen, nämlich wie alle Parteigenossen, bedingungslos dem Führer ergeben. Count Schwerin von Schonenfeld states that he has thought of the many murders. After the abortive assassination, the army is completely humiliated. The Nazi salute is introduced as a sign of its unbreakable loyalty to the Führer and its ties with the party. The SS troops become of equal rank. Himmler is given command of the reservists.
War draws ever nearer Germany. Now it is German troops which are retreating. Those who did not applaud then suffer just as much now. The last reserves are thrown into an already hopeless battle. The end is already near when Goebbels visits the city of Görlitz in March 1945. Together with Field Marshal Schoerner. That our soldiers wenn sie jetzt an diesem oder an jenem Teil der Ostfront zur Offensive antreten, keinen Pardon mehr kennen und keinen Pardon mehr geben. Jene Divisionen, die jetzt schon zu kleinen Offensive angetreten sind und in den nächsten Wochen und Monaten zu großen Offensiven antreten werden, in diesen Kampf hineingehen wie in einen Gottesdienst. Und wenn sie ihre Gewehre schultern und ihre Panzerfahrzeuge besteigen, dann haben sie nur ihre erschlagenen Kinder und geschändeten Frauen vor Augen und ein schreiner Rache wird auf ihren Kehlen emporsteigen vor dem der Feind erblassen wird. So wie der Führer die Krisen der Vergangenheit bewältigt hat, so wird er diese bewältigen. Ich bin fest davon überzeugt. Noch vorgestern sagte er mir, ich glaube so fest daran, dass wir diese Krise bewältigen werden. Und ich glaube so fest daran, dass wenn wir unsere neuen Offensive Armeen hineinwerfen, dass wir den Feind schlagen und zurückjagen werden. Und ich glaube so fest, dass wir eines Tages den Sieg an unserer Fahnen heften werden, wie ich je in meinem Leben an etwas festgeglaubt habe. Und am Führer Adolf Hitler, Sieg! 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 German Newsreel, March 1945. Der Führer, dessen Leben Tag und Nacht in ununterbrochener Arbeit und Sorge dem Schicksalskampf der deutschen Nation geweiht ist, besucht einen Divisionsgefechtsstand im Osten. Dem Führer werden die Offiziere des Stabes vorgestellt. Auch bei den Männern hat es sich schnell herumgesprochen, der Führer ist da. Die freudige Begrüßung der Soldaten ist wie ein treue Gelöbnis aller Kämpfenden an den Mann, der Deutschlands und Europas Schicksal in den Händen hält und The last pictures taken of Hitler show him together with some youngsters who relate how they have risked their lives for him. Kameraden, 
unter dem Befehl unseres Sponsors am Stadtrand von Hindenburg West gelegen. Diesen sollten wir gegen einbrechende feindliche Panzer sichern. Als diese dann aus der Richtung Gleiwitz am 24. Januar anrausen, teilte der Bandführer uns in zwei Gruppen ein und während er mit der einen gegen die Panzer vor uns, um sie selbst anzugreifen, gaben wir anderen gegen den Feuerschutz. Unser Bandführer hat drei Panzer abgeschossen und ist dann leider bei der Vernichtung des vierten gefallen. Nachdem wir seinen Tod festgestellt hatten, mussten wir uns aus taktischen Gründen auf einen Eisenbahndamm zurückziehen. Und dort habe ich am Abend die unter diesem hindurchführende Straße von Gleiwitz nach Hindburg, die den Zugang zur Stadt bildete, gesprengt. Als der Russe näher an Laubern heranrückte, habe ich mich dem Kampfkommandanten von Laubern freiwillig als Melder zur Verfügung gestellt. Meine Aufgabe bestand darin, Meldungen zu den einzelnen Kompaniegefechtsstellen zu bringen. Außerdem habe ich oftmals Panzerfäuste und Verzehrung in die Hauptkampflinie geschafft. Die Panzerfäuste habe ich auf Leiterwagen oder kaum unter feindlichem Beschuss in die HKL geschafft. The end approaches as a logical sequence. Everything repeats itself. Berlin's fate is in the balance. Russians enter a ruined city. Hitler avoids the consequences of his acts by committing suicide in his bunker on April 29, 1945. General Keitel signs the instrument of surrender. The Nazi leaders who have been put on trial in Nuremberg all declare themselves innocent of the crimes of the Hitler Reich. Bekenne mich im Sinne der Anklage nicht schuldig. Rudolf Hirsch. Nein. Bekenne mich im Sinne der Anklage für nicht schuldig. Wilhelm Keitel. Ich bekenne mich nicht schuldig. Nicht schuldig. Nicht schuldig. Ich bin in keiner Weise schuldig. Did Hitler do everything himself? Silent questions lie in the air when the concentration camps are opened. The inmates look out to freedom and unknown existence.
first steps toward life are uncertain and careful. These children escape death in the gas chambers. They are twins. The SS doctors were saving them for experiments, as if they were mice or rabbits. In Sonnenburg, the fleeing SS executioners left behind the corpses of 735 German anti-fascists who might have been unpleasant witnesses. Nine million human beings died in the concentration camps. Of those, 5,978,000 were Jews. 72% of Europe's Jewry and 85% of Poland's. What have the dead left behind in the camps? Ownerless suitcases. Half a million abandoned articles of clothing. Shoes which have trod the last road. spectacles which have seen the indescribable. Toys no one is going to play with anymore. Women's hair which was too late to be used as raw material in the war industry. Teeth. The gold fillings have already been removed and melted down. At least 25 million soldiers are estimated to have fallen on the various fronts during the Second World War. The victims among the civilian population have been estimated at 24 million. Innumerable mass graves bear witness to what happened. It must never happen again. Never again. <laughs>